Good morning everyone. I am Farah Deeba, Assistant Professor, SSDM Subod PG Autonomous College. I am going to take lecture on laser and holography, which are the contents of optics second. Optics, which is a branch of physics and a science of light. Here, laser and holography, everyone has idea about laser. They must have seen the pointers and the toys containing laser light and everybody is familiar with the holograms using in the books or in the concept of holography which are celebrities used for the entertainment and stage shows. So I hope you will enjoy learning laser and holography through this lecture. The content of my lectures are we are going to discuss about the definition of lasers. Here, uh, to describe the phenomena and the principle of laser, we must know about the emission and absorption of radiation and how to achieve the laser action, what are the specific uh, characteristics and the properties which we will discuss here are population inversion, metastable states and pumping. Then the devices which we are using to produce laser light are the crystal lasers or the gaze lasers and the examples are ruby laser and helium neon laser. We are also going to discuss about the diode lasers and the best example for that is semiconducting lasers. The materials used for the semiconductor lasers are the compound semiconductor lasers which we will discuss here. And finally, we'll discuss about the holography and its applications, uses of laser and holography. Then we'll discuss a brief introduction about temporal and spatial coherency, which is the basic characteristics of laser. Then finally, we'll discuss the fiber optics, which is used for the communication and which is an application of laser also. These are the contents which we are going to discuss in our two lectures. So, Start with the laser. Uh, what students will understand when they, in the end of the lecture, students must know the definition of laser. They are able to define the laser. They could understand the principle of population inversion and principle of laser too. They can explain the principle of semiconductor lasers and the concept of simulation and polarization is clear to the students. We will list out the materials which we are using in semiconductor lasers and those materials are the semiconductor laser compounds. And students are also able to highlight several examples and applications. So begin with laser, L-A-S-E-R. It is an abbreviated form. And the full form for this is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So in its name only, its principles lies, that is stimulated emission, rather spontaneous emission. We should focus on stimulated emission, which is the principle of laser action. Till now, these are the color for the lasers which have been discussed and achieved by the scientist. One is a red laser, blue laser and the green laser. These are the three colors which are very familiar in laser. Definition of laser. How we can define a laser? With the full form we can see it is a light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. But the more proper appropriate definition which can differentiate this laser with an ordinary laser done by its characteristic definition so its characteristic definition can be generated the first property and the first characteristic of the laser is it is highly coherent and this what do you mean by coherent coherence is coherency is the phase relation a constant phase relation uh, which we can see in the sinusoidal waves also so if this coherency or we can see the phase difference uh, between two any waves uh, it should be uh, it is in uh, space independent so it is known as spatial coherency okay? so if we are position independent if we are using two sources 
and uh, we are not originating two sources from the same source but we are taking two sources even then uh, and the point or the impact on the screen becomes more brighter and uh, more clear it means that uh, two sources are spatial coherent it means the phase difference is uh, independent to its position so this type of coherency would uh, be uh, would be the first characteristics of the laser light so rather uh, using spatial coherency we can also uh, use this characteristics that is the temporal coherency if the light is sinusoidal and the wave is sinusoidal then we can say it is a temporal coherency it means the phase difference is time independent that you have seen in the sine waves too so this is the first characteristics of the laser that is the light is highly coherent so knowing the nature of the laser light we can easily differentiate this laser with an ordinary light so on the basis of the definitions laser is highly coherent highly directional highly monochromatic travels a longer distance it is also an oscillatory beam so just to get the light continuously its oscillation is necessary um, whereas if we talk about the ordinary light this ordinary light is not coherent that is not direction it is scattered in all direction and that is also not monochromatic and it doesn't travel a longer distance you can compare the light of uh, which comes from the bulb and light of a pointer when you see a pointer it will not scattered here and there but travels a longer distance and having highly monochromaticity it means it is highly coherent too and where is uh, light which comes up from the bulb is scattered in a limited region it doesn't travel longer distance and there is no monochromaticity earlier the name suggested for the laser was loser l o s c r being amplification continuous amplification is only possible when it the waves are oscillating within a, a um, system so the name the name earlier was suggested is loser was loser l o s c r but oscillations finally amplify the beam that's why this name is replaced by laser finally we know laser with with the name l a s e r rather using l o s e r now the question arises what is this stimulated emission so to define a stimulated emission we should know the mechanism of the light emission generally the atom has a tendency to stay in a ground state but but uh when some photons are incident on it or some energy is given by collision by any other other source uh some light energy is absorbed by an atom and it gets excited and in the excited state it is stays there for nanoseconds and it will automatically come to the ground state and release that energy which it absorbs initially in any direction so this is known as spontaneous emission when another type of emission that is the stimulated emission this is seen in some atoms some atoms neither before coming to the ground state they stay for 10 to the power minus 5 seconds or 10 to the power minus 3 seconds in between these two states named as meta stable states and a condition of population inversion occurs means the population which should be greater in ground state will see in few seconds in the metastable states this is the condition of population inversion when it is triggered now uh, then the energy is released in the form of amplification means the energy the photons which it abs absorbs and which uh, through triggering they achieve all these energies are uh, obtained in the same direction and with the same frequency it means the points get amplified so this stimulated emission is very important in laser action um, 
this characteristics we have to increase by some arrangements to get a proper laser light this is the focus so the three things which we are seeing here is the two type of transition upward transition and downward transition and the three things we obtain here is in the upward transition and used absorption is there and in the downward transition we have two types of emissions one is spontaneous emission and the other is emission we can also explain this absorption and emission phenomena by this uh, diagram we can see here two states are given even in e2 e2 is the ground state and even is the excited state here the some energy is incident uh, this energy is gained by this atom it becomes yellow and get excited and reaches to the even state this is known as induced absorption you induced h mu photon here and it is absorbed here energy becomes even is equal to e2 plus h mu. here what happens after its excitation the energy which it is absorbed here it comes down and release the same energy in any direction and such type of emission is known as a spontaneous emission because it's automatically after nanoseconds it automatically come to the ground state a few atoms have the uh, quality to generate this stimulated emission like they uh, generate some metastable states and they stay there they are triggered and they release energy both energy in the same direction and the point becomes sharper or brighter we can see the amplification and this amplification is possible through stimulated emission so the new emission thus augments or amplifies the passing wave the phenomena can be multiplied sufficiently the resulting being made up of a wholly coherent light that is the light of single frequency or color in which all the components are in step which is with each other will be tremendously powerful so a powerful beam is obtained here this is the phenomena and the arrangements we have to made in the devices here we can also understand the, the phenomena of uh, absorption and spontaneous emission and stimulated emission through this diagram here three tubes are shown here in the first stage this tube in this tube you can see one mirror is highly silvered and the other is partially silvered and the action which we are giving is the pumping and through the pumping the excitation occurs and we can see the first tube spontaneous uh, emission is more as compared to the stimulated emission but if the oscillation continues and the arrangements are according to that key so spontaneous emission goes slower and the stimulated emission increases then a laser light is obtained finally in the c tube you can see the laser light emits out from the partially silvered surface and spontaneous emissions is decreased and the, the ratio will become very small as compared to the stimulated emission we can also uh, explain this phenomena by the comparative diagram uh, the same thing i am going to explain with this diagram here we can see we have two excited sta two states one is the ground state e1 and the excited state e2 h mu photons are incident to the atom it gains that energy and get excited in the second diagram you can see the spontaneous emission the atom uh, come down releasing that h mu frequency and any direction and in the second diagram the triggered energy and the absorbed energy it uh, both comes out in the same direction and the same frequency so the point becomes amplified if we talk about several atoms that this amplification becomes more much much better so taking this uh, criteria uh, in view we have to increase the stimulated emission and decrease the spontaneous emission uh, we can also so from the diagram uh, the spatial characteristics which comes out which we have already already discussed are spatial and temporal currency the definition of temporal and the spatial currency is mentioned here so 
we can also understand this the same thing with this diagram you can see in this diagram it is the atomic structure given uh, when emission occurs the that arrow become much much broader it means amplification occurs here here we can see how uh, the sunlight led and lasers can be differentiated in the sunlight uh, it contains uh, different colors and having they are not in phase also the red color green color and the blue color these three colors are not in phase and in the second led we for we find monochromaticity means all the all are having the same color but they are also not in phase they are trend tends to be in phase but the phase difference are not constant and in the third case that is the case of laser here we can see monochromaticity and the phase all the waves are in phase it means they are maintaining the uh, constant phase difference either the spatial coherency or temporal coherency so this is the basic characteristics of the laser light we can differentiate all types of these lights in this diagram if we proceed to next page uh the first characteristic is the population inversion and this population inversion is a condition to achieve stimulated emission and this we can see here we have two states excited ground state and excited states e1 and e2 uh in a few microseconds or few seconds the uh, atoms populations goes increases in the excited state or the matter stable states it means population which should be more in the ground state now we can see in few seconds like 10 to the power minus 3 seconds or 10 to the power minus 5 seconds you will observe that population in the excited state or the matter stable state it means populations goes reversed that this condition is known as population inversion or in numerical form we can see if n1 represents the population in ground state and n2 represents the population in e2 then for the population inversion n2 should be greater than n1 and when this population inversion occurs and if it is triggered here then all the atoms releasing their energy which they absorb will release in the same direction with the same frequency with that trigger energy it means the points get amplified this is what the population inversion is this is the basic requirement for the laser tube and this is only creates the stimulated emission for multiple photons and amplifications if possible population inversion we can write n2 should be greater than n1 this is also known as population inversion here this population inversion can be obtained by pumping only and that pumping is in a three process one is optical pumping then we have electrical pumping and we have chemical pumping also and for this population inversion at least we require three state Two state means ground and excited state. In between do these two states, there lies an intermediate levels, and those intermediate levels are known as matter stable states, where we can see the population inversion. And this is the basic requirement to obtain or to achieve or to better the stimulated emission as compared to the spontaneous emission. Or we can see uh, as Einstein's cup. explain in the einstein relation or coefficient relation how this spontaneous emissions uh, should be low as compared to the stimulated emission einstein has already given that expression so there are the requirements for population inversion therefore in a laser the arrangements which we are going to discuss in the devices should be like this only this is the basic diagram here the first thing is the pumping process uh the for excitation of an atom and for to achieve the population inversion condition pumping is required so in crystal lasers optical pumping is required and helium neon laser uh there we require electrical pumping and in some of the cases we use chemical pumping also we here see 
two brackets are given here or two concave plates are here one is highly silvered and the other is uh, partially silvered here we can see two optical resonators one is highly silvered the other is partially silvered the and these two are arranged in a tube and the length of that tube should be integral multiple of lambda by 2 so that we have standing waves and standing waves should be meet at a point that is again a, a form of amplification and these are oscillated and the beams are oscillated within the tube to continue the cycle and we continuously obtain the output in a form of laser light. So this is the basic requirement which we will see in uh, maximum type of devices and the th three things, three key elements in this laser devices are pumping process which can be optical, chemical or electrical and optical power increases on each pass through amplifying medium. So it, if gain exceed loss, device will oscillate generating our power and output. So to uh, induce this power and see, we, we need such type of arrangements which is shown in the diagram. So from the diagram, it is clear that the probability of a photon producing a stimulated emission can be increased by reflecting back through the medium several times. Or we can see in the previous slides, we have seen the diagram, we use the concave plates uh, at the Brewster windows, one is highly silvered, another is partially silvered. If the uh, photons are oscillating here, so it increases the stimulated emission, which is, uh, we can see it is a device, our device is normally fashioned in such a way that the two ends should be made highly reflective, means one is partially silvered and the other is highly silvered, so that we can obtain laser light from one portion to and this type uh, of oscillator cavity is also known as fabriparo cavity. So this is the optical feedback which we drawn from the previous slide diagram. Proceeding to another mechanism or to understand, understand the mechanism of the devices which we are going to discuss here, we should understand the phenomena how this excitation are how this uh, stimulated emission occurs to obtain the laser light. In the first type of tube, the length of this tube should be integral multiple of lambda by 2 and the two windows or the two sides of this tube, one should be highly reflected and the other is partially reflecting, means output coupler should be partially reflecting. In the first tube, we can see it the gray color atoms, it means they all are in ground state. When the pumping is done in the second tube, the, through electrical, optical or the chemical means, the atoms get excited and all the gray atoms which are in the ground state uh, becomes blue. That means they are in the excited state. In the third type of tube, after uh, nanoseconds, uh, the atoms automatically come to the ground state, releasing the energy in different direction. It means this is spontaneous emission, which is more as compared to the stimulated emission. But when it oscillates within a tube, so this spontaneous emission ratio decreases and stimulated emission increases. And in the fifth tube, you can see when this oscillation is in high, so we get a, a larger number in stimulated emission and the laser beam is obtained from the partially silvered or the output coupler. So this type of phenomena you are going to see in UV laser, in helium neon laser, in carbon dioxide lasers and in many phenomena. You can see the same process. So, we proceed to the next slide and discuss ruby laser. Ruby laser. Ruby laser is a L2O3 dog chromium ion. This ruby laser is a crystal laser. It is first discussed by Ali Jawa or 
This is the first crystal laser and this is very expensive laser because we are using here ruby road L2O3 which is dubbed with chromium ion which gives its characteristic color that is the pink color. And this is very familiar in jewelry also. We use this stone in jewelry. Here we are using a ruby road of approximately 5 cm in length and 1 cm in diameter. This uh, ruby road uh, is seen here. This is the pink road which is placed in a system and uh, which is surrounded by some tube, white color tube where xenon gas is filled that produces a flash and it helps in optical pumping. And this whole system is placed in a hollow like structure where liquid nitrogen flow is maintained to control the heat. So this is the construction of ruby laser and how it works in this chromium one Iron has the property to get excited and generate uh, metastable states for population inversion and that population inversion helps to achieve stimulated emission and hence the laser action occurs. Since this ruby is very expensive, so this crystal laser is very very expensive. It has some drawback also because uh, it gets heated and cracked the, since the flash which is produced by the xenon gaze and the chromium ion is going to absorb only two wavelengths that is a wavelength corresponding to the blue light and corresponding to the green light it is absorbed by the chromium ion to get excited and rest of the wavelengths will remain in the system which produces heat so liquid nitrogen flow is maintained here to control its heat but uh, um, Sometimes it gets cracked and that is its main drawback and being it is very expensive, we can not frequently change this tube. So uh, when the time span, another Alijawa and Marman itself discuss another type of lasers and that is the gaze laser. So to discuss its uh, working, we'll go to the three level energy diagram in the next slide. Uh, under, we can understand it's working through its energy level diagram and this is three level system how we can understand this other ground and the excited state of the chromium and here we can again see how this excitation occur it is mentioned 420 nanometers in blue it means blue wavelength absorbed and get excited uh, atoms get excited Whereas few atoms uh, absorb 550 nanometers and it can get excited and the transition you can see here. Spontaneous emission occurs after picoseconds and uh, you can see that chromium all the atoms which are uh, uh, at this level 3.29 centimeter inverse it will come out um, come down by triggering and the stimulated emission occurs and a red photon or red laser light is obtained uh, which corresponds to 694.3 nanometers or 692.8 nanometers they are the close wavelength but they are corresponding to the red color that's why red laser is obtained how we can see this is system we can understand it from here pink green and green one is a ground state, the other is a metastable state, and the topmost is the excited state. So, a stimulated emission occurs where the red arrow is shown. It means red color obtains from this type of transition. In ruby laser, as I already speak, it is a crystal laser. It gets heated and cracked, so it is very expansive. So one more thing, if we trace a graph between the time in nanoseconds and the intensity, so in few nanoseconds the intensity goes very high and in few nano, further nanoseconds the intensity becomes low because when we talk, it's a three level system, so it automatically comes down, then again raises by oscillations and uh, again it will come down so spikes are formed in ruby lasers that spikes has a utility in medical sciences as this ruby laser or ruby spikes are used to treat or destroy the cancerous cells uh, in a human body 
so it is helpful in medical sciences but uh, in the laboratories it is not uh, used properly because it is very expensive and the bands are not continuous so replacing such type of laser uh, gas lasers are used and the best example for that uh, which we are using frequently in the laboratories are helium neon laser we use helium with neon because their excited states are c and helium easily transfer transfers its energy to the neon by collision and the ratio of helium neon in a tube is 10 ratio 1 so it is first discussed by ali jawa and it is a four level system we can understand its working through all we can understand its diagram it is its diagram again an integral multi a tube is taken whose length is integral multiple of lambda by 2 or approximately 5 cm tube is taken here and here the pumping is electrical source source of pumping in the ruby road uh, that is the optical pumping we use xenon gaze and the flash is produced we are in this type of laser electrical pumping is done through which uh, excitation occurs in helium and helium on collision transfers its energy to the neon and neon has a characteristic to generate uh, metastable states and finally uh, population inversion occurs and action for lasers is achieved or we can say laser light is obtained so again for oscillations one is highly ref reflective one end of the tube is highly reflected and the other is partially silver through the through which we can obtain the laser beam so this is the basic diagram of the helium neon laser and we can understand from its energy level diagram here we can see helium atom and neon atom both the ground and the excited states of the helium and neon are shown e3 and e5 transfers its energy to the neon by collision e3 to e5 and a transitions uh, you, uh, three possible transitions are seen here you can see e5 to e4 e5 to e2 and e3 to e1 so these are the transitions you can see from here e5 to e2 e3 to e2 so these are the three transition and in all the three transition what we have seen here the first type of transition from e5 to e4 the corresponding wavelength we obtain here is 3.391 micrometer which is an invisible region again from e3 to e2 the corresponding wavelength is 1.152 micrometer again it is an invisible region so the transition from e5 to e2 the wavelength which we obtain here is 632.8 nanometer this is in visible region means this is the red wavelength laser light we obtain here so this is the laser action and by the fast decay it will come to the e2 to this state and again from this state again with the, collide with the walls of the tube and it come to the ground state so again the cycle will continue between the oscillators we have taken one is highly silvered and the other is partially silvered so laser light continuously obtained from the partially silver and the process and the cycle continues. So this uh, is the four level diagram or four level state diagram of helium neon laser is shown here. Here four different arrows are shown here. First is the pumping and then fast decays and um, laser action, lasing action or transition. In this way we obtain in the four, uh, four state we continuously uh, continuously obtain this thing so we don't obtain spikes here like the ruby laser we can we form a continuous beam so such type of lasers are used in laboratories for practical purposes and it has a wide application and research also so another type of laser that is very cheap laser is the diode laser this diode laser we can see in the pointers or we can see in the uh, tubes also. So the function of this laser uh, use the semiconductors and these semiconductors are the compound semiconductors. 
like gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, and so many examples are there. Here we have um, bands, we have um, uh, energy bands, conduction band, and the valence band. We have holes, we have electrons, as we have discussed in the semiconductors. Uh, we should know the light emitting diodes means light emits uh, from the barriers. Uh, in the same way, this uh, diode laser works. Here, the concept of uh, working as this uh, reduced band diagram. Here, this stimulated, stimulated emission occurs in the reduced band diagram, and this is the form of amplification. Yeah, here, light gets amplified. We can also understand this working through this thing. Quantum wave laser. Here again, we have electrons in the conduction band and we have holes in the valence band. P type and N type uh, compound semiconductors are taken here and they become this two, uh, they are given in the form of uh, faces or emojis. And the emojis are happy when the diagrams are reduced, and this amplification here occurs a lot. So, this is, uh, this is the way where. Uh, we can understand how the amplification occurs in the band diagram. This the inversion condition in semiconductor lasers can be achieved by obtaining reduced band diagram. As we have seen in the previous slide, how this reduced band diagram enhances the stimulated emission. The electrons in the conduction band as well as the holes in the valence band will quickly move to the extreme of the and bands corresponding to the levels E1 and E2 in the general four level system. Quickly means within a time scale defined by the dielectric relaxation time. The smaller this time is, the quick action is vigorous. And this vigorousness uh, is obvious in the reduced band diagram and which is going to help pull the enhance the stimulated emission which is the basic condition of laser so this is the inversion condition in semiconductor lasers in semiconductor lasers um, we can see what are the examples of the sem compound semiconductor we are using here are the gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide gallium phosphide indium gallium phosphide gallium nitride and these are the examples of semiconductor lasers in a compound form to amplify the light that is for laser action lasers have many important application here few are mentioned these lasers are used in dvd players laser printers barcode scanners it is also used in medicine for laser surgery and various skin treatments. It is used for cutting and welding of materials. And it is high, also used in military and in law enforcement devices. It is used for display and entertainment medium. Lasers have many important applications in lasers too. Here I am showing the pictures how the focus of uh, uh, an eye can be improved with the help of laser. So this uh, the bag of an eye is placed and a laser is input on that to improve the focus of a light. Here this is a hairbrush which is used to for the hair growth and this way comb is done. So laser light has also application for deploying of cats means cats are the pets which uh, uh, in the house, cause damages, so declining is done for the cats. The laser is also used to kill the infected cells in the human body, especially the ruby laser is used. As we have discussed, the spiking in ruby laser helps to kill the cancerous cell. And it is also used to for correcting the eye focus. The, the pre and we have already seen the picture in the previous slide. And it is used for treating acne problems and for the beauty treatments too. Thank you. Now next type of topic which we are going to discuss here is holography. Holography is the sister concern of photography. In photography, 
we capture uh, the image and develop it in the same way holography requires two stages one is construction of hologram and reconstruction of hologram holography what do you mean by holography holography uh, it the latin it's a latin name holograma comes from there only holo means complete grama means recording a complete recording whereas photography is not a complete recording because in photography we can't focus the unfocused part whereas in holography because it's uh, covers the three dimensional pictures and the object is focused with the laser light so we can uh, focus or uh, unfocus we can focus the unfocused part in holography so holography is a sister concern of photography and this uh, the basic requirements and arrangements are required and it's, you can see in this diagram uh, normal laser light is divided into, into two parts one is the reference beam and the other which uh, passes through the object is the objective beam these objective beam and reference beam interfere in each other and a photographic plate is placed here where this information is taken this is known as the construction of hologram and we can see this arrangement better in this diagram this is the basic diagram you can see the object is placed here and laser light uh, is given from that source uh, from the right side in the corner you can see it emits two lights one is red the other is yellow the red light goes to the uh, mirror and the yellow comes to the mirror m2 and this uh, is then reflected to the object and that red light is again come uh, here and reaches to the object where photographic plate is placed so one which is directly coming to the object arm is known as objective beam and which is going directly and come directly to the um, place where this object is placed this is known as reference beam they both interfere and uh, trap some information this is known as the construction of hologram this hologram is then again taken and again the laser light is incident on this uh, a hologram in the direction of reference beam and we get two images one is real and the other is imaginary so if the same photographic plate is taken but in certain angle and another object image we have to focus on this so, uh, we can see we can uh, with the same hologram we can store another image in the that same hologram so n number of images we can store in the same hologram with different angles when we change the position of your eye you can see different images as you have seen in the textbook some holograms are there when you see in one position when we keep your uh, position of your head in one direction you see it's uh, one name or logo when you change your position you will see the another image and you when you see according to the chain of position of your eye or hand you will see different images on the same photographic plate so it means it can store many information in the same photographic plate which is not obvious in a photographing so it is a sister concern and better than photographing and uh, the main thing is it is uh, illuminated with the laser light and if we are going to focus the unfocused part so that is a better image you can obtain here where in photography we can't do this the pixel will be uh, disturbed so here we can see the holography which is a sister concern of photography so one is the real image and it's a real a hologram through the hologram the real and the virtual image of the main is seen here so the this is, this is the basic application of a holography okay, how holograms work which is seen in this diagram and this we can see in uh, stages also many celebrities perform their performance and show their performance with the, with the holograms of their only 
वन इज द एक्चुअल इमेज एक्चुअल पर्सन एंड द होलोग्राम्स विच परफॉर्म देर डांस on the stage with them or they come to the public also like a paper ghost concept uh means a real mean is there and this its imaginary image is formed and that image we can generate in any place so this is the paper ghost concept or uh, we for the entertainment of a real image person is dancing and its similar holograms are dancing with the same style as the real image is performing so this is used in entertainment and as a purple ghost generated thank you so much